So one of the major advantages of Android smartphones over those iPhone buggers is the fact you can completely transform them in mere seconds simply by downloading a fresh new launcher. Whether you want to streamline the interface to cut out distractions and save precious seconds of your existence, or customize every last bit of the UI for a highly personalized setup, you're pretty much guaranteed that there's a launcher out there that'll make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So here's my regular roundup of the best Android launchers you can download right now. And by the very best, I do of course mean my own personal favorites. The Play Store is packed with literally thousands of different launchers right now, quite a lot of them really ruddy good. So if you've got a deep burning love for any that I've missed off this list, don't forget to let me know what a massive testicle I am in the comments below and clue me in to your own personal favorites. And for more on the latest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, one of my long-term favorite Android launchers is still that all-time classic Nova. It's been around for even longer than the Queen, possibly, and like our very own Death Defy and Madge, the Nova launcher just gets better with age. And in version 7, it's a proper stunner with regular updates and even broader customization. Pretty much every aspect of the Nova UI can be meddled about with, from those transitions and icon visuals to the app store and animations. Nova offers impressive gesture control too. For instance, you can open straight up to specific features when you swipe across an app icon. And I love how you can add in a scrollable dock for fast access to your favorite apps without adding in loads of bloody desktops. And there is also a Prime version of the Nova launcher that will cost you a few quid, but this unlocks all of the launcher settings to give you full fiddling opportunities. And I've also still got lots of love for the Poco Launcher 2.0. It's a fast and light option that won't drain your battery unnecessarily or pilfer all of your phone's valuable resources. You gotta love that simple, minimalist design. The stock Android layout hasn't been molested, just tweaked with plenty of cool little improvements. In the apps drawer, you can group your bits based on type, so you can quickly access all your games, messaging apps, media streamers, and so on. Alternatively, you can also cluster them based on the icon color, which sounds a bit silly at first, but it's actually a surprisingly intuitive way of finding what you need. Another fan favorite is the nifty desktop shortcut, which cleanses the memory and speeds up your blower. And despite the simple layout, you can still customize a fair bit here, chucking in your own icon packs, playing around with grid sizes, all kinds of shenanigans. It is obviously a bit limited in that area compared with rivals like Nova Launcher, but if you want a lightweight launcher that's just neat and tidy and very satisfying indeed, well, Poco Launcher is well worth a squint. And another one of my favorites is the very juicy sound and pear launcher, which is another impressively fast and light wee bugger, and it works impressively well on older Android devices. On the surface, Pear Launcher is nice and neat and simple, very stock Android, except you can tweak the icons, folders, fonts, backgrounds, colors, all those bits. There's a good amount of customization here, but you won't feel swamped with options if you are new around these parts. And best of all, Pear UI feels light and fast, even on older phones. If you want to unlock all of Pear Launcher's bonus features, including some extra gesture support, that will cost you a couple of quid, but that is one of the cheapest premium launcher unlocks in this roundup. And if you do happen to be using an Android smartphone that's getting a little bit old and creaky these days, well, definitely check out Lean Launcher as well. This is another option that's lighter than a lettuce salad, but it offers full customization of the desktops and the app straw, with the ability to hide away any apps you don't want others prying on, plus the usual gesture support. Now, quite a lot of Android launchers don't mess around too much with the general stock Android vibe. And another one just like that is the Launcher Launcher. Like the others I've already mentioned, you get a good selection of customization here. Everything you see can be tweaked in some way. You can keep the likes of the Google feed if you download the separate Loan Feed plugin, or just ditch it entirely if you want. And I like the selection of gesture shortcuts, which allow you to easily yank down that notifications panel, hibernate the phone, or load up your favorite app. Sadly, in 2022, the Launch Air Launcher doesn't seem to be receiving any regular love from the developers, but it is also completely free to download and check out, so you might as well give it a go if you're intrigued. And if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely do not sleep on the Microsoft Launcher either. This one, again, getting on a bit, just like the Launch Air Launcher, but unlike Launch Air, this one is still occasionally getting updated and improved. Again, it's not exactly a huge change from stock Android, but it comes with a pleasing custom aesthetic and some bonus bits I love, such as an expandable dock to stash away more of your favorite apps, and a lovely feed, which is basically a scrollable page of widgets that's fully customizable. 
And courtesy of those regular updates, most of the bugs that made it a bit of a janky experience have thankfully been squashed. And good news for skin flints too, because like the launcher launcher, the Microsoft launcher is completely free to download to your phone. So yeah, definitely worth a gander. Now anyone who gets all misty eyed thinking about those cute colourful Windows Phone handsets of yesteryear will adore Square Home. This nostalgic tile based desktop operates in almost the same way as Windows Phone, dishing up a wall of dynamic icons that can be resized and reordered. Complete naturally with those up to date notifications and oh man does it make me long for those days of super happy cheery bright orange Lumia smartphones. Square Home chucks in some original tricks like the ability to set up cube tiles which can be fully rotated to reveal even more app shortcuts. It's proper lush stuff and if you ever had a Lumia smartphone you ought to yourself to check it out. Now do you find you waste too much of your limited existence by doom scrolling and piddling about on pointless apps or maybe you're constantly getting distracted by an endless flood of notifications? Well in that case definitely check out the minimalist phone launcher from QQ Labs. This is about as bare bones as it gets, serving up a hand-picked list of your essential apps and hiding away all the other stuff that you might otherwise mess around with wasting precious minutes or even hours every day. You can still swipe left to access a full list of your apps, but individuals can also be blocked from sight completely. And I like the little details here, like how that ever-diminishing circle that surrounds the time shows you exactly how much battery life you've got remaining. And with the minimalist launcher, you can also set time limits on how long you're allowed to use each individual app, be it a social media stream or a addictive game. When you open the app, minimalist will ask you how long you have to actually spare on it and then you will be nudged when that time limit is up and it's time to quit. And on top of all that, you got notifications, tools and lots of other bits to help keep you from getting distracted. So if you find you're wasting far too much time on your blow when you've got better shit to do, definitely check out minimalist. That said, to unlock all of the minimalist launcher's features, you will have to pay a one-off fee of 25 quid, or you can pay 15 pounds a year if you would prefer. It's one of the more expensive options in this best launchers roundup, but you really will have to pay that if you want to take advantage of the minimalist launcher's best features. And also, why did they have to call it minimalist? Because you won't believe how many times I f***ed up saying minimalist in this video so far. A shout out also to All Launcher, which sports a similar vibe but with less of the distraction tools. It's a super simple but effective solution. Just stick your favourite essential apps on the front end and hide the rest away from sight. A swipe right will open up the phone book and a swipe left activates the camera, although you can actually change these apps to your own preferred versions in the settings. And another launcher that serves up a streamlined approach to Android desktops is the excellent Niagara Launcher. Again, this gives you a short list of up to eight of your favorite apps, tucking the others away inside a cascading A to Z index. Personally, I actually prefer this approach now to a more basic app store. It's neat, it's efficient, and it means that social media apps and other bits that might just distract you are much less likely to catch your eye. And Niagara can also make your life easier in other ways. If you're playing music or whatever, some media controls will pop up on the desktop for fast access. You can swipe right on any app to check out waiting notifications or jump straight to certain features, while a swipe down will open the notifications. You do get some simple customization, including a choice of light, dark or ultra dark theming for the settings, but the UI is very straightforward so there's not much to tweak. Overall, if you want something that's quick and simple to use and that will really help you to focus on the stuff you need to do rather than the stuff that you perhaps just want to do but it'll just waste a whole bunch of your life, well, Niagara is definitely one of my favourite options right now. Yet another launcher with a similar minimalist vibe is Ratio, which separates your apps into category drawers you can fully customise. It's neat and tidy with a handy search bar if needed to find apps or actually search within apps. Plus you've got a dedicated section for messages from key apps like WhatsApp. You can still customise a surprising amount of stuff with grayscale or colour options, you've got a selection of wallpapers, different icons, yada yada. And it's free, completely free, so more money to spend on booze and crisps and yeah, that'll do actually. And another great option for anyone who wants to streamline their everyday Android experience is the Kiss Launcher, which sadly has bugger all to do with that aging, makeup, love and glam rock band. Boo. Forget that traditional Android desktop experience, you've got no widgets, no multiple pages, although you do still have an app store. But all you got on the desktops is a search bar which you use to find whatever you need, be it an app, a contact, even a specific setting. As you search for bits, they'll stack up in your history so you can fast access stuff you use a lot. 
And you can also chuck anything you'd like to a row of permanent favourites down near the bottom. And once you got used to this setup, it is surprisingly intuitive and it is again a great way of preventing yourself from getting distracted by apps that you don't need to be checking out on an hourly basis. And KISS does chuck in some customization, although this is pretty basic compared with a lot of the launches I've already banged on about. And it's once again completely free, hip hip huzzah. And if you like the sound of KISS and all these other minimalist style launches that are designed to stop you from getting distracted by everyday shenanigans, well definitely check out the before launcher as well. Again, a similar sort of vibe, just don't have time to wibble on about it now. And another oldie but a goodie is the Smart Launcher. It's one that again has been a long-standing favourite of mine and it's now in its sixth iteration. The idea is that your homepage acts as a central hub which you can fill with icon shortcuts to your favourite apps while swiping up reveals the app page where you'll find all your stuff stacked up and sorted into different categories. Swipe right and you'll access a selection of cuts from Microsoft News. It ain't the most customizable effort out there, but still does a decent job of dishing up relevant headlines. Meanwhile, swiping left, it gives you the widgets page, which you can cram full of your favorite goodies. And if you swipe down or tap the small search bar, you can quickly hunt down a specific app or contact. If you want to shake things up, these different pages can be rearranged or even removed entirely from within the smart launcher settings. So you can set up your handset however you like. And you've also got a shed load of customization tucked in there if you're willing to stump up for the pro version. This isn't particularly cheap, but it's not the most expensive option in this best launchers roundup either. It'll cost you just over 10 quid for the full unlock. Otherwise, you can also pay on a monthly basis if you just want to test it out for a bit. And last up, I often get asked how to tailor Android to suit older users and those with limited sight. And while Android has accessibility features built in, which are great, I'd also highly recommend the Big Launcher. This free to download tool dishes up a very simple, straightforward user interface. Only the most basic essential features can be accessed right there from the desktop with nice big clear to see icons if you do have limited vision. And you can also quickly see how much battery life is remaining and how strong your network signal is as well. You've got oversized text and an SOS feature which can immediately call and text your key contacts when the button is tapped. All in all, great stuff. And that's the last of my pick of the best Android launches you can download right now. But of course, because there are more great launches on the Google Play Store these days than there are people fighting on Twitter, I've inevitably missed out a few of your own personal favorites. Of course, there are also quite a lot of really sh launches out there, such as, for instance, the new Nothing launcher, which is about as lovable as a rabid raccoon. So make sure you always check out the reviews before you dive on in. If you want to know more about the Nothing launcher, well, I did a dedicated video on that absolute steaming pile. Uh, but anyway, yeah, definitely please let me know your own picks of the best Android launchers out there that you've tried out that I missed out of this list. It might just be the case if I didn't have time to get to it because I uh, get so many and this can't be a half hour extravaganza, which means I should probably stop banging on right now, of course. So please do uh, pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube shit, and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.